What's up guys, Jared here with another vlog. Season four of Rick and Morty starts this weekend and accordingly, we're relaunching our Rick and Morty podcast, The Squanch. So to celebrate, I thought I'd take a little time to do something very, very stupid. I'm going to dissect the infamous Rick and Morty copy pasta. If you're unaware of what I'm referring to, a Rick and Morty copy pasta went viral in mid 2017 and is likely plastered all over the comments section of this video. For the less internet obsessed of you, a copy pasta is a copied block of text that is pasted in response to a post, usually as a means of trolling the writer of said post. The Rick and Morty one, often used to sarcastically rebut criticisms of the show or make fun of its diehard fans, goes like this. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Rick and Morty. The humor is extremely subtle, and without a solid grasp of theoretical physics, most of the jokes will go over a typical viewer's head. There's also Rick's nihilistic outlook, which is deftly woven into his characterization. His personal philosophy draws heavily from Narodnaya Volya literature, for instance. The fans understand this stuff. They have the intellectual capacity to truly appreciate the depths of these jokes, to realize that they're not just funny, they say something deep about life. As a consequence, people who dislike Rick and Morty truly are idiots. Of course they wouldn't appreciate, for instance, the humor in Rick's existential catchphrase Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, which itself is a cryptic reference to Turgenev's Russian epic Fathers and Sons. I'm smirking right now just imagining one of those edel-pated simpletons scratching their heads in confusion as Dan Harmon's genius wit unfolds itself on their television screens. What fools. How I pity them. And yes, by the way, I do have a Rick and Morty tattoo, and no, you cannot see it. It's for the ladies' eyes only. And even then, they have to demonstrate that they're within five IQ points of my own, preferably lower beforehand. Nothing personnel, kid. Even if this copy pasta was written as a joke, we've all probably met this person. How could you, you ignorant plebe, ever understand true art like I do, a person who's read upwards of 30 Wikipedia articles? Regardless, it's hilarious. But me being me, I really clung to the literary references. I'm going to sound like a douche here, but I've read Fathers and Sons, which is supposedly the inspiration for <laughs> I haven't read it in years, but I remember enough to know that this claim is obvious bull and that chances are the writer was pulling some random Russian novel out of their ass to make fun of certain people on the internet who cite obscure works of philosophy and literature when talking about cartoons. Bravo, internet. But then, recently, I was awakened by a sinking thought, a thought I would try desperately to push back into my subconscious. What if this copypasta is actually not entirely bull so humor me as I dig my own grave in this vlog on overthinking the Rick and Morty copypasta. Now the copypasta is funny for a few reasons. One, because this guy is making egregious interpretive leaps in order to elevate his favorite cartoon. Two, because he's just so damn smug. And three, we can't help but love a little roast of people who, like us, love literature and philosophy, but allegedly unlike us, are total dicks about it. The origins of the pasta are disputed. According to knowyourmeme.com, the earliest known variation was posted by a Redditor named Neekish on r slash cringe anarchy. Some believe the writer was entirely in earnest in their proclamation that the show can only be understood by geniuses. Others think they were being ironic. After thinking about it for a while, I've come to the conclusion that whoever wrote it was serious. Let's dive in. The original writer of the pasta makes three big claims. One, that you have to have working knowledge of theoretical physics to understand the jokes in Rick and Morty. Ah, oh, I thought it was further away. This is clearly false. Although some of the jokes pay lip service to scientific ideas, the show is not overly concerned with scientific fidelity, nor should it be. We covered a bit of this in the last part of our Philosophy of Rick and Morty video, so if you want the specifics, check that out. Two, that Rick's nihilism draws heavily from Narodnaya Volya literature. Narodnaya Volya, for those of you who don't truly get Rick and Morty, was a radical organization in Russia during the 19th century that assassinated a bunch of Tsarist officials, eventually culminating in the killing of Tsar Alexander II. 
Narodnaya Volya literature, I'm assuming, refers to the non-fiction texts that influenced the movement, such as the works of figures like Sergei Necheyev, Mikhail Bakunin, or Pyotr Lavrov. But I couldn't find Narodnaya Volya literature specifically in my research, unless they mean pamphlets or something, but I digress. Many involved in this movement, or the similar one that preceded it called the Narodniks, believe that anything in service of revolution was justified, and thus were labeled nihilists. In this specific Russian context, nihilism meant agitating for revolution against the Tsarist order, a sentiment popular among the younger generation. Writer Maya Steppenberg, quoting historian Nicholas Ryazanovsky, claimed that nihilism meant, above all else, a fundamental rebellion against accepted values and standards, against abstract thought and family control, against lyric poetry and school discipline, against religion and rhetoric. Nihilism as we refer to it today is similar, but maybe more universal. It's a rejection of any standard of value, meaning, or morality. As we've covered in a handful of videos, Rick and Morty is saturated with this sentiment, primarily through Rick. Nothing you do matters! Your existence is a lie! Nobody gets it. Nothing you think matters, matters. This isn't special. This, this is happening infinite times across infinite realities. Including this? Yes! Now, I'm going to be very generous to the writer of the copypasta and say that he or she was probably thinking that since the overtly nihilistic Rick is an anti-Federation revolutionary who eventually brings the entire thing crumbling to the ground, The war in which we fought is far from over. We live our lives in hiding. The galactic government considers us terrorists. He bears similarities to the attitude of Narodnaya Volya. But there's little to no connective tissue to prove that Rick's personal philosophy is specifically drawn from this organization. There's nothing about being a nihilistic political rebel that is unique to this particular movement, so the connection is perhaps paper thin, but not nonsensical. Which brings us to the writer's third point, that Wubba Lubba Dub Dub is a cryptic reference to Ivan Turgenev's novel Fathers and Sons. I was almost certain that this citation was pulled at random in an effort to sound smart, but Again, there is some logic to the author's thinking. I hate to admit it, but I scoured this book trying to find any justification for the claim that Wubba Lubba Dub Dub has some bearing in the text. And of course, in as much as I am able to tell, it's bull****. But it'd be remiss of me not to mention that there are some key similarities between Fathers and Sons and Rick and Morty. According to Steppenberg, the nihilist movement in Russia was reacting to two main things. One, turmoil following the emancipation of the serfs, and two, the publication of two books that spoke to the younger generation's disillusionment. They were What is to be Done by Nikolai Chernyshevsky and Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. Now importantly, Turgenev was not part of Narodnaya Volya, nor was Fathers and Sons explicitly associated with them. However, the book did speak to the growing nihilism of the Russian youth. It was hugely controversial at the time of its release. Readers couldn't quite figure out if Turgenev was promoting nihilism or denigrating it. Fathers and Sons focuses on the Kirsanov family, as their son Arkady brings his radical friend Yevgeny Bazarov to his family's estate after graduating from university. A nihilist, Bazarov challenges and calls for the destruction of all the old Russian ideas that don't have any basis in reason or science. As he famously says, what's important is twice two is four and all the rest's nonsense. His demeanor deeply disturbs Arkady's family, but Bazarov dies before he's able to realize any of these ideas. The book is essentially about the gulf between the value systems of fathers and sons during this time period. If I were, again, being extremely generous to the writer of the copypasta, I'd say, yeah, there's a similarity in the way Rick constantly trivializes anything not bound in science. What people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fades, leaving you stranded in a failing marriage. I did it. Your parents are going to do it. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. To the nihilistic Bazarov. Some of his diatribes speak to the same sense of cosmic insignificance Rick and Morty often reflects on. The tiny little place I occupy is so small in relation to the rest of space where I am not and where it's none of my business. And the amount of time which I'll succeed in living is so insignificant by comparison with the eternity where I haven't been and never will be. And yet, in this atom, in this mathematical point, the blood circulates, the brain works, and even desires something as well. What sheer ugliness, what sheer nonsense. But again, there's no reason to make this connection. 
There are plenty of characters in literature that struggle with such ideas, and citing this book seems like cherry picking. So, does Rick and Morty draw from Narodnaya Volya and include specific references to essential texts during the nihilist movement in 19th century Russia? No, definitely not. But does Rick and Morty as a cultural artifact, as one of the most successful animated shows on cable, have a similar function in the zeitgeist that Turgenev's fathers and sons did, of introducing the masses to nihilistic ideas, of presenting a flawed central character that leaves the audience not knowing if they should identify with his worldview or condemn it? I'm inclined to say, probably. So there you have it. You can now pedantically discuss the dumbest thing on the internet. You're welcome. Anyway, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our Rick and Morty podcast, The Squanch. It's on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and our channel, Wisecast. We'll be breaking down every episode of this very short season, and as always, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.